Having teleported back to Lumbridge last time, we were called into the castle by the Duke of Lumbridge. Your Grace, you wanted to see me, I presume? Yes, Citizenscape. I saw you arrive out of the window. I've heard about your influence all through Miss Thalin and Ascarnia. Oh, yes, I have been through many travels now. I plan on going into the desert soon. I see, I see. There's something I had hoped to ask of you before you left. But first, there was a lady looking for you. Really? Where? Just there. You'd better see what she wants, then come back here and I will discuss the matter with you. Heading outside, we talk with the League's tutor. She wants to reward me for my participation in Leagues. I'm not exactly sure what she's talking about. It seems to be related to that strange dream I had a little while back. She sells me an outfit and a few ways to change my home teleport animation and my alchemy animation. Neat. Let's take this stuff off. Do I hear someone fighting in the yard? Stop killing these people. Stop. No matter how much I berate and follow him, he won't stop. I better tell the Duke. Your Grace, there's a man outside the castle walls killing people. Yes, I have been informed. We've sent Brooke to deal with him. Oh, I see. So, Your Grace, you said you had a matter to discuss with me. Indeed. It's not as important as many of the adventures you've been on, I'm sure. But it's causing concern in the castle. Well, whatever it is, I'll help if I can. I'm glad to hear it. There's been some damage in the cellar and some silverware was stolen. My advisor, Sigmund, insists that monsters are to blame. I don't know what a monster would want with silverware though. I understand. I'll investigate. I wonder if the cook saw something. He's close to the cellar. Heading down to the cook, he backs up Sigmund's claim. He says that he saw a creature in the cellar dart through a hole in the wall. Apparently, it looked like a goblin, but with bulging eyes and a headlamp. The hole has since been blocked up. Before we bring any of this to the Duke, I think I'll investigate further. There's definitely been a disturbance here. It's blocked off, but I bet I could mine it open to investigate. I bring the matter to the Duke, but the advisor, Sigmund, assures him that it's an incursion. The Duke suggests that I unblock the tunnel and investigate more. With my handy pickaxe, I dig into the wall, opening the way into a tunnel system. I can't see anything, and soon enough I'm attacked by insects in the dark. Back with a lantern, I can see around. There are strange markings on a rock here, and a dropped brooch. It doesn't look like something made by humans. There are supports in the tunnels made of bone all throughout. Let's go back to the Duke. Sigmund now agrees with the cook that it must be goblins. The Duke doesn't think that goblins could craft something as fine as the brooch, but it wasn't stolen from Lumbridge. Sigmund suggests goblin genocide, but the Duke won't commit troops until he's sure that it was goblins. He suggests that Reldo and Varrock might know, so I'm sent to talk to him. With teleportation runes, I quickly make my way to Varrock and into the library. After some back and forth, Reldo recalls a book with a similar symbol. Reading a book on the goblin tribes, it appears to be the symbol of the Dorgashun tribe. I should ask the goblins. Making my way into the goblin village, the generals tell me that they are the lost tribe that escaped underground during the God Wars. They can't decide whether I would greet a member of that tribe with a bow or a salute, so they teach me both traditional greetings. Time for us to return to Lumbridge, with our new home teleport. The Duke is still looking for me to investigate, but Sigmund continues to push warfare. To learn more about this tribe, I'm sent back into the tunnels. Just to be safe, I bring my mace with me. I never know if I'll need to use it. The tunnels are long, dark, and twisting. I try to follow the symbols on the rocks to find my way, but that leads me to a dead end. Eventually, I come across a mine and see a strange-looking goblin nearby. They're surprised to see me, and even more surprised when I do a traditional greeting. Apparently, breaking into the cellar was their doing, but it was an accident as they were mining. They didn't even know Lumbridge was there. They say they didn't take the silverware either. Well, somebody must have. Leaving the tunnels, I return to the Duke and tell him what I found. When I tell the Duke about the goblins, Sigmund seems very pro-war, even when I tell him that the goblins are friendly. This is suspicious. I do remember that he wanted me to join the Humans Against Monsters group. I bet he's using this accident to start a war. I don't like stealing, but I need to check through Sigmund's things. If he has the silverware, then I can prevent war. He does have ham clothing in his chest. This might be enough to do something, but there's no silverware. Better check the ham hideout. Well, 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 if it isn't the missing silverware, I figured as much. I'm going to inform the Duke. The Duke is mad and dismisses Sigmund from his service. Seeing no need for war, he hands me a treaty to give to the goblins. The tunnel is now going to remain open. I'm going to check it out and see if I can become a citizen among the Goblin Society. 
The Kandarin headgear works like a torch helmet. Perhaps the goblins will like that. Since they're going to allow us to use the mine, we can mine some iron ore here and some silver too. There's a goblin here named Nardok who sells weapons. They say that it's seen as a dirty job since most of the Dorgashuna pacifist. Only the guards carry weapons in the city. They do have some interesting items, but I don't have any money on me. Okay, this should cover it. I'll get a bone dagger and a bone crossbow, plus some bolts. Speaking with Miss Tag, he tells me that the Dorgashun Council has a favour to ask me. The Dorgashun have yet to visit the surface and want to send someone with me to check it out, since they're curious. They know that it's dangerous with the ham members, so they want me to act as a guide and also get some spare ham outfits just to be safe. I'm going to need a ham set too if I'm going in disguise, but I don't even have one full set just yet. That's not really a problem though, I know where I can get some and I don't mind stealing from the ham members. Okay, not a great start, but I did get a second hood. This could take a while. There we go. A full set for myself and a full spare set, with a few extras to boot. I managed to find a clue scroll in one person's pockets. I don't see why I should let them keep it. Speaking of thieves, there's Rick with a diamond. Thank you. Hi, you must be the agent that the goblin sent. Yes, hello surface dweller. I'm Zanuck of the Dorgashin. I'm Citizenscape. Nice to meet you, Zanuck. I can't wait to go to the surface. Did you get me some ham ropes? Mistag said you would. Yes, I have them right here. All right, let's go then. I'm so excited. Taking Zanuck up the cellar ladder, we arrive in the kitchen. She seems to think the castle is so enclosed that it's hardly different from the underground. Taking Zanuck outside, she sees the sun for the first time. So this is the surface. What's that? The giant light? That's the sun. It's so bright. I can't look at it. For generations, my people have lived with rock over our heads, but now I can see the sky. Shall we talk to some people? Yes, please. We talk briefly with the Lumbridge Guide before visiting Father Eric. What's a holy Sarah Doman? Oh, no, don't ask him that. He doesn't like it when you ask him that. Previously on Citizenscape. Are you a new member of this congregation? Oh, I don't know. This isn't a Zamorakian church, is it? Zamorak. Heavens no. This is a church of holy Sarah Doman. Who's Sarah Doman? Who's Sarah? Uh. The two of them go on about gods for some time, eventually coming to a steady compromise on the subject. So your whole tribe don't worship any gods, not even the big high war god? Back when my tribe went underground, we were being forced by gods to fight in their horrible wars. It was only after we escaped them that we were able to make a civilization. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know if I follow any one god really. I'm still making up my mind. I lead Zanuck around and speak to a few people. The townsfolk are scared of the goblins and Bob doesn't want Zanuck in the shop. Zanuck spots a surface goblin on the way around, but they have philosophical differences about peace and war. Hans is far more open to the new treaty, and the Duke wishes for the Dorgashun city of Dorgash Khan to be open to visitors. It's a slow decision from the council, and the Duke of Lumbridge worries that the Ham members may be plotting something, as they've been growing in number. Zanuck is excited to visit a shop, and the general store is kind enough to allow her to buy something. Interested in wood and trees, Zanuck wants to buy a hammer, a bucket, and a newcomer map to take back with her. Having seen enough of Lumbridge for now, Zanuck tells me a story about the mark on her forehead. It was about the same time that the surface passage opened up. I was visiting Juna, the story snake, and collecting the Tears of Guthix. The story snake? Tears of Guthix? Shh. Just listen. I collected the tears like I have before when I felt a sudden pain on my forehead. Juna told me that the sign marked me for a special purpose, but she didn't say for what. She said that one day it would glow and I should visit her again. Well, it must be important for something. Did you want to see any more of Lumbridge? Yes, we should visit the Ham Hideout. The elders wish to learn about any plots against us. We should disguise ourselves now. Good idea. Disguised as Ham members, we enter the base and begin to look around. Zanuck doesn't like the way that the members are speaking and filling their minds with hate. I speak with a man named Johannes, but he won't tell the plans to just any member. Citizenscape, over here, a trap door. Oh, well spotted, I never even saw it. Climbing down the trap door, Zanuck and I find ourselves in a guarded storeroom. With so many guards, we aren't likely to get through without being spotted. However, Zanuck has a plan to get around that. Citizenscape, if you can get them to face away from me, I can take them out with my crossbow. Don't you think killing is a little extreme? 
If we don't, they'll take out my entire people. Haven't you killed evil people before? Hmm, I suppose you're right. I can't hear anything. Shh, I can hear them. They're saying something about a machine and... Oh. Oh no! I recover consciousness and I find myself imprisoned. Zanuck is nowhere to be found. Picking the lock, I run into Johannes again, who tells me that Zanuck has been dealt with and that a plan is in motion already for her tribe. Exiting the hideout, we find Zanuck's lifeless body dumped at the entrance. The mark on her forehead is glowing. Remembering her story, she needs to be taken to Juna. Collecting up her body, I make my way to where Zanuck told me that Juna resides. Laying Zanuck before Juna, we're told to collect the tears of Guthix to bring her back. We need to collect the blue tears, not the green ones. Once we've collected enough, we bring them to Juna and feed them to Zanuck. Get off me, you monsters! Zanuck, it's okay, you're back. It's not okay, Citizenscape. I heard their plan before they caught us. They're building a machine to tunnel down into my people's city, and they're going to flood it. We have to do something and fast. Do you know where they are? They said something about a watermill. Okay, we need to investigate. It sounds like we might be in for a fight, so I grab some food and my mace and a shield. I'm still wearing the ham gear to try to get past anyone who would stop us as we make our way into the watermill. We manage to sneak into the base by hiding Zanuck into a box and going down into a cellar. We walk a short way before Sigmund notices us and calls the guards to fight us. In a lengthy fight, Zanuck shoots with her crossbow while we attack with a mace, taking out the guards and nearly taking out Sigmund too. Sigmund, however, teleports away with a ring of life at the last second and we're left with the machine. We smash it, then we head to tell the elders of Dorgesh Khan. Arriving back at the mine, Ertag, the leader of the Dorgeshun, welcomes us back and asks for a report. Zanuck tells of how he stopped the plot against the city, and the council come to a decision to open their gates to outsiders. We have access to the city now. I think it's time that I take a look. They've got all sorts of wiring along the walls. That's interesting. It's also lit up in here. I thought it would be darker. This cave goblin is curious about the surface. They have an interesting setup in their house. Oh wow, look at this place. So many lights and such great craftsmanship. There's some different flora here too. Looking around, there's a man here named Oldak who says that he can make me a teleportation style sphere if I bring him the runes and molten glass. That sounds like something I can do later. Let's look around a little more. Oh, a bank. That's very handy. Okay, I got some money out. Now we can make purchases if we find anything. Hmm, these goblins are talking about food from the surface. It sounds like there's a market for it right now. There's a nice little eatery here, but they're not serving food within the place. They have a grand market just outside of it with little stalls. For a mere 10 gold pieces, we purchase a frog burger, a native delicacy. Not too bad. We'll also buy a rope here in the shop. I always seem to need those. Relduck here sells frog leather armor, something we don't have on the surface. Frogs are getting a hard time of it today, but it's some new ranged gear for me and fashionable too. Miltog here sells lamps and I've been wanting one of those mining helmets for the convenience and to fit in. We need level 65 fire making to light it, but we can still wear it and look cool. Barlak here will buy special bones from us, both curved bones and long bones. He uses them for construction and can teach us a thing or two. He must be the one going around propping up the mining tunnels. The goblins are interested in surface foods and suggest that I talk to Erlan if I want to sell. I do have a lot of surface stuff, so let's do it. We track her down and get permission to sell. That was easy. Let's try some bread first then. It's hard to decide on prices. If I try to sell cheaply, they don't want it as they think there's something wrong with it. But if I ask for too much, they don't want to buy. Eventually, I make some good exchanges, selling off the pineapples, the bread, chompies for a good profit, then the fish too. One lady gives me some mushrooms to eat in exchange. Some more foods for me to try. Let's look around some more. There's another section to the city further from the entrance. I find a sand pit and a furnace and anvil. I do need glass for the teleportation orb. They've got a frog cooking on a spit here. Must be making frog burgers. They've also got a range and a sink. So they have plumbing and cooking appliances. How industrious of these goblins. There's a dark area back here with dangerous cables to cross. It is too dark, but I don't think I'm agile enough to cross just yet anyway. Though there is a section of cave below. 
Most of the upper floor here is housing. There's a large building here that's empty. They must be working to put something in there soon. There's a goblin nursery here, which is just adorable. The children could use a few manners, but I'm a stranger in their city, so I suppose I can't argue. They've likely never met a surface dweller before. I walk in on a conversation between Urtag and an ambassador from the dwarves. It seems as if dwarven and goblin relations are not going too well, but I'm not going to stick my nose in where it doesn't belong. I have a few things from the bank to make use of the city's resources. First, I can scoop sand from the sand pit here and make soda ash on the range in this kitchen. Then, I can put the two together in the furnace to make that molten glass. I tried to smelt my ores here at the furnace too, but I'm told that the furnace is too fragile and is for glass and jewellery only. Well, now I have the molten glass and the lore runes. I can make a moving over distance sphere with Oldak. Let's use the furnace and lumberage real quick before I continue. The teleportation sphere seems to work just fine, returning me to the city, but into someone's house. Might need a little calibration. Now that the bars are smelted, I can use the furnace here to make a silver tiara. I can also use the unique looking anvils here to make some nails too with my steel bars. Now equipped with a light source, I check out that cave system to the back of the city again. There's a goblin here named Turgol, who tells me that they use the heat from lava to convert magical energy into power for the city. There's a cave system down here with creatures that I recall from my Slayer training. Cave bugs, bigger than I've seen before. Cave crawlers, cave slimes, and rock slugs. There's a fishing spot here and a strange ring of mushrooms, just like some that I've seen on the surface. The big frogs also seem like something that the goblins use a lot in cooking and crafting. I recall needing salt for the rock slugs, so I quickly purchase some from a Slayer Master and then return. I'm going to use the new bone crossbow and frog leather for some training. First, I take out some cave bugs. The big one's too tough to damage though since it keeps regenerating health. I take out a cave crawler, having bought antipoison with me. I manage to take out a cave slime easily and a big frog too. There's a fishing spot here and I bought my fishing gear. Swamp weed. I wonder if the Dorgashun use that in their glass making, since they don't have seaweed down here. I catch some frog spawn, which might be a delicacy here too. With a few slimy eels, I level up my fishing to 38 and can catch cave eels too. Catching a few, I make my way to the rock slugs. I have 10 heaps of salt, so I may as well use them up. The rock slugs are easy enough to take out, but they can only be finished off with the salt that I bought. My Slayer training is coming in handy. With my new gear, I level up range to level 34 before taking out my 10th and final rock slug. Back in the city, I cook all the eel on a range here, and it seems that I was right. I can make soda ash out of this. I've done a lot around this city and saved them from disaster. I want to talk to Zanuck before I make my way elsewhere, but she's not in her house. She must be off adventuring on the surface. It's been interesting to experience this unique culture and to mesh with the people of Dorgish Khan today. It's a shame that so many surface folk struggle to get along with the friendly goblins. I have received a clue scroll from my time in the ham hideout. Before I make my way into the desert, I'm going to complete it. First stop, Varok Bank for another clue. Next, Port Sarim where I get a clue from Captain Tobias. Back to the bank in Varok? Well, that's a weird request. There was a casket here the whole time? The elegant legs aren't really my style, but I like the colour. I'll see you next time in the desert. A special thank you to Jan Elikantua for providing a voice for today's video. If you'd like a chance to voice a character in the series, subscribe and join the Discord. Links in the description below.